Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to have a quick look at a typical uh, consumer unit and sort of incoming meter and other equipment. And that's actually in the uh, cupboards just uh, above me there on the wall. Now, uh, this is a fairly sort of typical installation. It's not one that I personally install, but uh, nevertheless, it's one that we've got access to for the moment. So uh, let's have a closer look and see what's actually up there. Now, what we've got here is a fairly typical installation, as you'd find in most homes in this country. And uh, on the left there, we've got a consumer unit. This is an older type, which only has an RCD for half of the circuits. So in this one, the uh, RCD in the middle there covers the circuits to the right of it, which is you know, labelled sockets uh, mainly. And then the uh, four on the left there, which is for lighting and uh, the cooker, apparently. Those are not covered by the RCD. And then you've got that main switch there over on the left, which basically controls the whole lot. And just underneath there's a doorbell there as well, which is a mains powered variety. And in the cupboard here to the right there, we've got uh, on the right hand side, we've got the main incoming supplier's fuse. And the cable coming out the bottom of that is actually where the power comes into the building. It's got a sort of putty coloured uh, sort of seal on the bottom. And uh, the top part of that, you've got a fuse on the left side. And then on the right side, it's just basically a link or a connection box and the uh, line connects to the uh, left side where the fuse is, and the uh, neutral connects on the right side. And uh, from that we've got the two wires, the uh, red and black, which come out of there, and then go into the bottom of the electricity meter in the centre. Now the electricity meter there is a fairly uh, recent one, it's one of these sort of plastic jobs all made from uh, electronic rubbish, and that's fairly uh, typical of what you would expect to find these days. And the power comes out of the meter, on the two right hand wires there. Again it's black and red in this case and then they actually go across to those two uh, connection blocks on the left and then from there there's uh, additional wires come out which go into the consumer unit. Now other things in here we've got the main earth which comes in and that's again on the lower right there and that's connected to the outside covering of that incoming cable with that uh, rather doubtful clamp there. That's actually designed for pipes but it's fairly common to find them on incoming cables like that. This is a TNS supply, so the earth is a separate connection there. Basically it's the outer covering of the cable that comes in. And from there we've got that green and yellow wire there which goes up and across into the consumer unit. Now in terms of who owns what in here, the uh, actual main fuse and the uh, sort of cutout as it's usually called, and the incoming cable, those are all owned by the uh, DNO, which in this case is uh, Scottish and Southern Energy Power Distribution. That depends on obviously the area you happen to live in, and uh, that's normally called the distribution network operator. And if you want to actually have anything done with that, then essentially that's the only people that can do anything. They're the ones you're going to have to call if, say, you want to have it moved or if it was broken or damaged or whatever. And it's entirely their responsibility. There's nothing you can do with it yourself, and certainly you shouldn't attempt to do anything either, because of course moving that is likely to be fairly dangerous. Bearing in mind that there's uh, not much protection on the other end of that, so if that incoming cable was damaged or destroyed in some fashion, basically it's going to just arc and spark and kill people in the vicinity. Now in the centre there with the meter, that generally belongs to the company you buy the electricity from. Now prior to the electricity industry being privatised, that would have been the same as the cutout and everything else, you just had no choice then, but of course these days you can buy electricity from pretty much who you like. So the company you buy electricity from is often not the same company that actually takes care of the network or the incoming cabling. And then on the other side of the meter there, we've got the uh, consumers and the wires connecting to it. And those are what actually belongs to the owner of the property. And obviously includes the consumer unit and all the wiring inside. So you've got sort of a three-way split there. You've got your uh, incoming cable and cutout belonging to the operator for the particular area. And that's just tied to where you live. The metering equipment in the middle, which is determined by who you buy electricity from. And then of course your actual equipment in your house, which is either yours or obviously whoever owns the particular property. Now here's the cutout in a bit more detail, and this is a fairly modern one, it's uh, made out of black plastic. Uh, there are a fair number of these still out there which are made of metal or cast iron. Those are uh, pretty ancient and probably should have been replaced by now. And see on the left there I've just got the, uh, the top part which is a fuse, and that whole fuse can actually be removed. And inside it's a cartridge fuse, typically 80 amps or possibly 100 in some cases. And that's what actually could be removed to disconnect the supply to electricity to the building. Now the problem with that is you're not supposed to remove those things yourself, because as we just saw there it actually belongs to somebody else, so uh, you're not supposed to remove that. And you also note it has a seal 
attached on the side of there to indicate if anyone actually has been tampering with it. But uh, if you wanted to have the, uh, say, a meter would need it to be changed, or you wanted to have some a new consumer unit fitted, which would involve disconnecting the supply, then that is the fuse which will be removed, and you can uh, usually arrange that to be done from the uh, DNO for your particular area. And if the meter people come around to change the meter, then they generally are permitted to remove that and replace it as part of the meter replacement process. And on the right-hand side there, that's just basically a solid link in there, which is where the neutral connects. Now there are some of these out there which have two fuses, generally the older metal variety. So you've got a fuse in the line and the neutral. Those should have all been replaced uh, several years ago, but of course there's probably a few out there. But uh, if you get one of those, what's more likely to have happened is that someone's actually replaced the fuse for the neutral with a solid link already. But of course it may appear from the outside that there's actually two fuses contained inside. Now the lower part of this is basically just space to spread out the incoming cable so they can connect into the top. And then, of course, at the bottom left there, we've got the incoming cable. In this case, it's one of these lead-covered varieties. It's pretty old. And we've got that sort of sealing gunk, which someone's uh, stuck around the bottom there to keep a bit of a seal on there. Some of these uh, were filled with pitch or like a black tar substance in the past. Not sure whether this is one of those, but uh, if that's the case, then you may find that that's actually leaking out the bottom, because when it heats up, it uh, tends to flow more easily. And then it's going to drip on the floor and ruin your carpet. And again, if any of these problems occur, then it's just a matter of calling up your uh, relevant company. They will usually come out and replace or repair that. Now here's the meter, and so this is one of these electronic jobs, so it's fairly modern. And uh, it's got the four wires on the bottom, all the meters here have the same arrangement of connections. So incoming supply is on the left, and the outgoing is on the right. So uh, from the left we've got the uh, line in, and then we have the neutral in there. And you see those little rings on the wires as well. And then we've got the neutral out, which has the two rings, and then the line out, which again has the two rings on that. And all the meters have the same wiring arrangement, and all of the terminals are generally the same size and spacing as well. So, of course, when it comes to replace the meter, it obviously makes it a lot easier and simpler. Now, these two black boxes are just connectors, so they're two separate items. And on the left there we've got line, and on the right we've got neutral, and it, all it's doing is simply the cable's coming in from the meter, and then another wire's coming out, goes to the consumer unit. Now normally you'd only have these things here if you had, say, two or more consumer units, so that's where you would uh, join all the wires together. In this case they're not particularly needed because it's only a single wire in and a single wire out. But uh, nevertheless, there they are. And of course from there those wires just go through the side and into the consumer unit on the left side there. Now this is a fairly typical consumer unit, uh, and this is, say, approximately 10 years old. Uh, dated last inspection there, what, sort of July 2007. And uh, generally recommended to have these inspected again every 10 years or so. And uh, this is an older type, which is generally referred to as a split load. And the split refers to the fact that you've got, a, on the left there, you've got a main switch, which is the red one. And then you've got various uh, circuit breakers after that. Uh, most of those appear to be for lighting and the uh, cooker for some reason. And then we've got a spare space there. And then the split is where this uh, RCCB is located, or RCD, same name for different devices. And that actually covers all of the circuits to the right of there. So that's mainly the uh, sockets and things, and the uh, water heater in this case. And the split, of course, just refers to the fact that it's basically split into two sections. You've got your RCD protected part, and then the other part, which is not. This type of thing is not normally uh, fitted now because uh, most circuits now require RCD protection, including lighting, mainly for the fact of the cables being concealed in the wall. But in 2007, when this thing was fitted, then that was perfectly acceptable and the normal kind of thing to have fitted. As we've seen in a previous video, the uh, newer consumer units uh, generally have two RCDs, so uh, you'd essentially have a second RCD between the main switch and those circuit breakers on the left side. Here's a look inside the consumer unit. This is not particularly tidy, but uh, it's fairly typical of these things that you'll see. I mean, there's obviously, uh, could make it a bit tidier on the top there if you wanted. And I'm sure there's uh, no sort of pictures around if you want to go and look of people who've spent three years getting all the wires perfectly aligned and parallel and all of that. But uh, the reality is that uh, most consumer units are fairly untidy inside. This uh, is no exception. And uh, you see on the left there, I've got the main switch and the two wires that come in the top there. Those uh, black and red ones are the supply from the metering equipment in the cupboard there. And then from the bottom, we've got the blue wires coming out, which are the neutral. 
one of which goes up to that bar at the top left, and that does for the circuit on the left side. There's one we saw for lighting. And then another blue wire coming up the bottom goes across to the RCCB in the middle. And again, that's for the uh, pieces over on the right. And the uh, a bit difficult to see there, but there is another large blue wire coming up the top of the RCCB there, which goes over to the second neutral bar, which is to the right of the first one. And other than that, all of the uh, circuit lines connect into the top of the circuit breakers there. All the circuit breakers in this particular unit actually plug into the bus bar behind. You can see in the centre there where's that gap with a spare slot where that would actually plug in. And that's all contained inside and basically goes along to the main switch on the left. Here we've got a closer look at the uh, earthing bar. So all of your circuit protective conductors are connected there. And uh, of course that's supposed to be in the correct order. So of course you need to identify which one belongs to which circuit. And you see the main earth comes in there also and connects on the end along with the equipotential bonding. And that goes to the gas and water elsewhere in the building. Now over this side we've got the two neutral bars. So the one on the left there is for the non-RCD circuits and the one on the right for those covered by the RCD. And the uh, large blue one at the front there is just actually what goes down to the top of the RCD there. And of course that's supplied from underneath, which comes across from the main switch. And of course the other side there, the other neutral goes up again to that bar, which we saw on the top there. Now this particular breaker is which are made by uh, Crabtree. The uh, actual live bus bar which comes across from the main switch here isn't actually visible. It's actually concealed in the back there. And the breakers actually plug in to those little slots. You see there's just one in the uh, centre there. And that's uh, it's all uh, concealed away and uh, obviously you can't actually touch that. Now that's a better design in terms of safety because obviously there's no live parts you can actually touch there. But unfortunately it does mean that the configuration of this unit is basically fixed as it's determined by that uh, fixed bus bar in the back, so not something you can really change particularly easily. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that's how this one works. And you see there's no actual screws on the bottom of the circuit breakers, so they just literally plug into that bar at the back. And then of course your outgoing circuits just have the screws there in the usual way. And so there they are all along the top. Now these breakers over here are a different style, they're the same make and type. But they're just a later version of these that presumably have been replaced at uh, some later date compared to the older ones over here. Now what we're looking here, that one in the centre there with the two wires, you can see the uh, copper is actually peeking out of the top of the circuit breaker there, so those wires have been cut uh, slightly long. They should be fully in the top of the circuit breaker. That, uh, that's only a minor issue, but certainly uh, they ideally should be flat with the top as the ones on the left side there are, so you don't have the bare copper showing above. And again those there look uh, fine as well, and you see on the neutral there there's a little bit of copper showing as well, but uh, so that's a minor issue, it's not something you're going to get all busted up over. Now the top wiring here is uh, rather untidy in here, but uh, this is fairly typical, I mean this is certainly no by means the worst that we've seen. In theory, yes, you could spend hours getting all the wires perfectly parallel and lined up and all nice and neat, but uh, in the real world that seldom happens, and this is a fairly typical example of what you'll find. And so this is actually quite tidy compared to some that I've seen. But uh, nevertheless, if you want to spend six hours uh, carefully lining up all the wires and uh, putting them in perfectly, that's fine. But of course, bearing in mind that as soon as someone else comes along and changes something, they're going to get all uh, pulled out and moved about anyhow. So. Again, it's not the tidiest in the world, but uh, it's hardly the uh, end of the universe just because some of the wires aren't uh, perfectly parallel and straight in there. Now in the consumer unit there we saw the uh, main bonding connection, or the main equipotential bonding, and the other end of the wire is actually here. And in this case it's a single wire which goes to both the gas and the water. And uh, I'll just have a closer look there. I see that it actually goes to the gas pipe first, which is the one on the left, and then that just loops across to the water on the right. Um, for some reason they've also put a third one on that other pipe in the middle. This is actually underneath a central heating boiler in the kitchen. And uh, for some reason they've uh, decided to bond that other wire onto the uh, pipe at the back there. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that's all connected in the proper fashion. Although so there's actually an extra one there for some reason. But uh, that's how it should be. And uh, you may find that in some cases they're in different locations. So of course you'd have a uh, wire going to each of those locations. but 
In this case, they're directly next to each other, so a single wire from the consumer unit is perfectly fine. And this is basically where it comes into the building, because uh, in the kitchen here, I'll just zoom out a bit, that says a uh, gas boiler there, directly above, and the gas literally comes in straight through the wall. And the water actually comes in underneath the kitchen sink, and if we just turn here, you'll see the kitchen sink is literally a couple of feet to the right here, so it's literally uh, right there. So that's a fairly typical consumer unit. That particular one's made by Crabtree, but uh, most other makes are fairly similar. And uh, that's the older type there with the RCD protection on about half of the circuits. They're not uh, normally fitted now, but uh, certainly a very common thing as they were fitted for a considerable number of years, uh, generally sort of 10 years ago plus. And the uh, supplier's intake there with the uh, incoming cable and the uh, fuse and whatever, again, that's very typical. And that's usually the most common arrangement. That particular one is stuck up near the ceiling that they're usually found also under the stairs and in other places. But it's always the same kind of arrangement where you've got the uh, incoming uh, fuse and cutout. It belongs to the uh, distribution network operator for your area. And then your electricity meter is the company that you're buying the electricity from. And then of course after that is your own equipment with the uh, wires and consuming it and all the circuits beyond that. So uh, that's all for this time. And until next time, thanks for watching.